Let's take a look at some global data inside of a game maker project. So I want you to tell me if this sounds familiar. You're working on some sort of game and inside of that game, you have a bunch of different characters. So you're going to go ahead and create a different object for each character. So let's say we have an archer character. So we'll create an object called OBJ Archer. We have a warrior character. So we create an object called OBJ Warrior. We have a goblin. So we create OBJ Goblin and so on and so forth. This continues on and on where we are creating one new object for every different type of character. This solution is largely unscalable. I think that there should only be two places that we make modifications. One is the object definition itself. So in this case, this would be the game maker object. And the changes here should be purely functional and mechanical. So if we are changing the behavior or functionality of the object itself, then we would make those changes in the game maker object. The other place that we should be making changes is in the data schema. We can think of this as a configuration file in which we are configuring the differences in implementation of behavior. So we have one place that is the object definition that defines functionality and behavior, and the other place is the configuration. So if we go back to our previous example where we create a different object for every different character type for our game, what we're doing is we're splitting our implementation among many different points. Every object that I create for those different character types, such as the archer or the warrior or or the goblin are different files that I have to go back and edit and manage later on in the project's development. So as the project continues to scale, the number of places that I have to go change these files increases linearly. So by creating clearly defined global data, whether locally in our game maker project itself or remotely on some sort of database, we are streamlining the ways that we can implement, manage, and modify our different object definitions and character types throughout the entire life cycle of the project. So here on the screen, I have an example. On the left side is our object, and on our right side is global data for configuring this object. If I go ahead and hit play, we can visualize what we're working on. This is an isometric grid-based tactics game with different units that move around the board. In this case, I have one unit on the board that looks like an alligator. So if I come back to the Game Maker project and look at the code here, I have a unit object on the left, OBJ unit, and on the right, I have a script called unit data that defines all of the data for that unit. So every time I create a new unit type, I don't change the object definition on the left at all. I also do not create any new objects. I simply add to our configuration file. I define a new type of unit, and then I define the data that is unique to that unit. If I have an alligator, or I have a monkey, or I have a fish, whatever unit I have, the core functionality of that unit is not going to change. And if it does need to change, then it should be configurable through this data file. So things like movement, attacks, state machines, sprite transitions, all of these different behaviors should be consistent from one unit to the next. So we really need to wrap our minds around this. There should only ever be one object definition and the differences between object types should be defined through some sort of configuration file. Now there are always exceptions to this rule, but I think that embracing this as a general rule of thumb will really start to make your code a lot cleaner. So let's go ahead and take a look at how we can implement this. Yeah. I'm going to start by creating a new script. I'm going to call this global enemy data. And I'm going to go ahead and create a new object also. I'm going to call it obj enemy. So on the left side, I have my enemy object. And on my right side, I have my global enemy data. Let's start by defining our data. So first, I'm going to create a global struct called global.enemy data. This will be an empty struct. And one of the things I like to do right away is to create a macro that points to this global variable, just to make it easier and quicker to access this data in the future. All right, now I will move into this global enemy data struct scope. I'm gonna create a new enum called enemy. And I'm gonna use some of the characters that I have in this project. So they're all animal based. One enemy will be our alligator and the other will be a monkey. So now I can say self of enemy alligator is empty struct. So now I can start to add values that are associated to this alligator. So I could say the unique ID is enemy alligator. Could say the name is alligator. Add some sort of description, big teeth. Maybe I want to add some combat data. Life is 100, 
attack is. It's 20, defense is 10. And then maybe I want to add some sprite data also. So let's say idle sprites. Our index is going to be SBR units allocator. Awesome. So here I've just templated out some data that might be appropriate for an alligator enemy, but I have a monkey enemy also. So let me go ahead and just duplicate this and we'll change some of the data. Okay, so I've just went ahead and defined two different entries into our global enemy data. Now, these are just data definitions. They aren't implemented or plugged in. They don't do anything. So I'm going to go ahead and now template out what an enemy object would look like that utilizes this data. So the first thing that we need to do is we need to capture what the enemy type is, right? Is it an alligator? Is it a monkey? Now you could say type is enemy.alligator, but type is sometimes a keyword that I like to reserve for other variables. So instead of using type, I'm gonna go ahead and use a variable called UID, and this stands for unique ID. But instead of hard coding it to enemy alligator, we want this object enemy to be of any type. So UID is equal to self of UID. So we're going to read this variable in when we create the object. If you're curious to learn more about this, check out my video on object pre-create. All right, so now I've captured the UID. Now I need to fetch the data. Data is enemy data of UID. Now, if I wanted to do some error handling here, I could. I could say, you know, if data is undefined, then throw some sort of error. But I'm gonna assume that the data was fetched properly. Now from here, as long as these are the first two things that we do in our object, everything from here on out can be configured based off of the values in this data. So a perfect example of this is we could say sprite index is equal to data sprite idle index. And now what we've done is we've taken our UID. So if it's the alligator, we're going to come into our data. I'm going to go down into my sprite data. I'm going to go into idle. I'm going to go into index and I'm going to read SPR unit alligator. And I'm going to set that to my sprite index. Now let's say I want to set my image speed. Image speed is equal to data sprite idle speed. All right. So we've just set our sprite data based off of our enemy config. So I'm not going to implement things like our combat data or our other data here. I think you get the point. The last thing I need to show you is how do we pass in this UID value? So if we think about these characters as being units again, as I mentioned initially, if I open up my player object and I open up unit and I open up unit create, you'll notice that this unit create takes a UID parameter. So if I open this, you'll notice that this UID value gets written to our config struct. And then this config struct gets passed into our instance create depth runtime function where we pass it in to create our unit. So UID will exist inside of this config struct. And then when we come into this object, to create it, we know that we can read it from self and then we will have set UID and then the rest of our code can execute. Again, if this is confusing, please check out my previous videos on object pre-create, the config struct part one and two and player and character abstraction that will tie the rest of this together. But really, that's it for this video. All I wanted to do was show how we can very quickly and easily set up global data and how we can tie that global data to a game object. So if you ever find yourself creating 10 different object types to represent different variations of objects like enemy walk sideways or enemy invisible, OBJ item arrow, OBJ item gem, try to think more abstractly about those objects. Can I create an object that's instead called OBJ item interactable? Or OBJ item collectible. And then instead of creating a bunch of different objects for those collectible item types, I create one script called global item collectible data. And then inside of that, I define the differences between the collectible item members. You can use this for any game object that you have multiple variations of. I mentioned enemies. I mentioned units. I mentioned items. You can do this for UI elements. You can use this for weapons and hitbox data. You can use it for pretty much anything. There are going to be some circumstances in which it is better than others, but I will leave that for you to figure out and experiment with. In the next video, I'm going to expand on this just a step further and show how we can declare some default values. So this way we're not having to copy and paste this data every single time if we don't need to. Or maybe we only want to copy and paste some of it, but leave the rest of it defaulted. I'll show that in the next video. But for now, if you guys have any other questions, leave them in the comments down below and I will see you later.